Now our other guest is here, Tom Geary. Hello, Tom. Hello. We know the answer to this, but our audience doesn't know. What's your trade and what's the name of your union and what's your role in the union? So I am a 17 year member of Carpenters Local 339. Um, my union recently kind of went through a merger of three locals. Our hall, our union hall used to be located in Auburndale. It's now in Wilmington. Um, I'm a job site steward and I'm also president of my local. So thank you for being on Tom. Uh, we wanted to bring you on the show for a while um, to talk about labor and worker issues. And I saw <laughs> on social media, your union, um, we'll probably throw up a photo that I found, um, your union picketing at a local Waltham site from a contractor called Superior Drywall. Uh, so this was an easy excuse to have you on to talk a little bit more about labor in general, but how did that picket go? And can you talk a little bit about why you guys go out there? So technically that particular picket we were on last week is in Lexington. It is right on the Waltham line um, on Waltham Street next to the old Friendlies, which is now a bank. Um, the general contractor on that site is Callahan, who we've um, had many pickets against. Um, they've performed a lot of work in the city of Waltham. Um, they're currently on 2nd Ave. They're currently on 3rd Ave. They burned down Cooper Street. Um, so the subcontractor in question that we were holding the picket against superior drywall, we have written affidavits from, um, some of their employees that they're being paid cash off the books. So that's obviously a concern. Um, in this case for the town of Lexington, um, when you're paying employees off the books, um, certain, you know, the police, the fire, the funding, the schools, that's all paid for by tax dollars. And when these contractors are paying people off the books, every, every taxpayer is uh, affected by those. And it also affects the workers and not um, putting money into Social Security and other programs like that. So th that's what that um, informational picket was. And usually that's the basis for our, our uh, ongoing picketing in this area. So your hope is to attract the city's attention and then uh, the municipality won't do work with them in the future? Is that is that the goal? It's, it's to raise um, public awareness, um, to let people know what's going on within their cities and towns. It's to put pressure on the developer to say, hey, you know, you're doing the wrong thing. And um, also, you know, in some cases, it's to let the workers know that we're there and we have their backs. Um, we've helped uh, a lot of non-union carpenters recover a lot of wages that they haven't been paid because, believe it or not, a lot of these people just aren't paid. And we're not talking about $10, $15. We're talking about thousands and thousands of dollars. Uh, the... Local Carpenters Union uh, acquired the contract to build the new high school. Uh, I've been seeing you uh, post pictures of that a journey, um, and that's essentially your assignment for the span of three years, four years. Do you want to talk a little bit about how that's going? Yeah, so we, uh, um, the contractor, the general contractor on the site is Consigli Construction. Um, they are signatory contractor of ours. So luckily for us, the bid list for that project was four or five contractors and they were all signatory with us. So we knew um, pretty early on that we'd be working on the project and really just given the scale of it. Um, they're, a, they're a huge company and that's not a bad thing. Um, they're a family oriented company. They've been in the area for uh, a long time and um, they do great work. Um, the projects so far on time, on budget um, and everything's going well, um, as good as it can be. And uh, so my assignment from my business manager, we, ha we have job site stewards 
So I'm assigned the task of steward on the job. So I work with my tools first and foremost, but I'm also there, um, at, I guess, as most people would see as kind of like grievance, kind of grievance, watching over the members, making sure everybody's working safely. Um, and uh, that our end of the collective bargaining agreement is being held up. So during special permit hearings on Waltham City Council, I've seen the union leadership and most recently you, uh, sometimes they'll come in and give input during these hearings, urging a developer for the special permit uh, to consider hiring union led uh, contractors instead of notoriously unsafe contractors like we just talked about. Um, can you elaborate on that practice a little bit? Um, <clears throat> because Waltham City Council can't vote to make anyone hire anyone. So I'm curious if this has been effective at all, or is it just a means to spotlight unsafe practices from those contractors? Um, I think it's, I, I would say it's in line with um, any concern from any citizen on really a, a myriad of issues, um, especially when it comes to the public hearing process. Um, and we, find that time to, you know, to be effective, to let the community know um, what's happening as far as developers working in, in, um, in the city, uh, developers and the, their hired contractors. Um, the, other, the other end of it is we have hundreds of members from my local and as well as there's hundreds, of, hundreds and hundreds of carpenters by trade that live in the city. And the city council is elected by voting members of the city, carpenters and, and people alike. So, you know, it's, it's a good time to let this, the members of council and as well as the mayor, if she's involved in the process, are concerned as constituents as well. I think it's a good strategy. It's, it's nice because that's one of the only times that anyone can say anything during uh city council is those special permit hearings. So utilizing those is a, is a good tool. Um, so what are some ways resident, what are some ways for residents to support workers, unions, and use unionization efforts locally? Um, I think it, it's, you know, we're seeing a, a kind of an interesting time in the country with um, some large scale unionization efforts happening. I think it's just really important for all of us to talk to each other, to, to know who your neighbors are and just and listen and um, listen to the workers of the city and uh, what kind of what their struggles are and, um, you know, what their eight hour workday is. Big unions in a city like your own don't have a strike clause in their contract, which essentially means you guys aren't able to strike for better conditions. Um, what are other ways the union can negotiate a contract effectively without that? Luckily for me, I'm not involved in contract negotiations. So I, I'll start with that one because that is, it's, uh, it's very hard. But I think, you know, I would be critical of, of really, you know, again, our, our own membership, union members in general, and just really the general public that I think we've lost our way being involved in the political process overall. And a way for us to, to from the guy that works down the street or the girl that works on the street to our own membership is to be involved in the political, political process and to show up at town meetings and, um, and just be involved that way. Waltham has been renowned for being a worker city with a rich history in labor, um, which we should talk about another time. Um, do you have any insight into how or when Waltham lost that culture? Um, you know, it, it that's, I think we still have it. And, you know, I've, I'm 38 going on 39 and, you know, growing up, it seemed like, you know, it was a good mix. There was always a good mix of white collar workers, blue collar workers, and just, you know, 
no contempt for one another. Um, growing up, there was two to three active farms in this operating within the city. Yeah, I think it's really important to embrace working people and whether you, you know, whether you bang nails like I do for a living or you sit in an office and type on a computer, I, um, we all, we all give a lot of our time and energy, um, to the working to, to work. So, um, it's important to remember current efforts, but it's also important to remember the workers struggle and, and lend an ear to, to, um, to what people go through each and every day. And I think, you know, the, I know the city is very focused on constituents and, and, uh, and that's, of course, important. But there's also a lot of other people that travel to the city each day. And it's important to, you know, I think we should represent those people as well. That, because people spend, they may not live here, but they spend a... a um, a good portion of their life here working within the city limits. The cost of living has been going up forever, uh, primarily in energy and rents. How can unions protect workers from this? So, I, I mean, just right off the bat from just our wages and benefits, um, you know, we collectively, we're able to bargain together for the best possible wages and benefits. On the flip side of it, I know, actually, I think it's this evening in Boston, our, my particular union, the Carpenters are involved in a round table about rent stabilization with the mayor. The discussion between all of us, and, and this is more Boston centric, has been like, we build these high rise condo buildings and our members can't even afford to live within the city limits in, in, in any capacity. So, and, and that's coming from um, a union members that make a decent wage. So we've, I think it's important for us once again, to be involved in, in all the discussions um, at the city, city level. And of course, you know, Boston has more resources, but it goes for, the city of Waltham too, right? We've seen rents and, and you know, the median price for a home are, are just uh, really insane to be, to be quite frank. And, uh, you know, I, I'm somebody that like, you know, missed, maybe missed the bubble by 10 or 15 years where I'm kind of out of that, that realm of um, affordability. And, you know, some of that falls to me. Sure. I'll take that hit, but like, I know there's members coming up that are Waltham residents that are in the apprenticeship and they, you know, they, they have dreams of owning a home like anybody or owning a condo or, and there, there's really not room for these people, unfortunately, in the city. So. Speaking of politics, do you have, are you going to run for city council this session? I have no plans to run for city council. Um, as far as I've, just became president of my local and so I'm just trying to focus on that for the time being and and making sure um you know I'm a good steward to my local and and uh look out for my 1500 members but you would not be the first person um or maybe even the first person in this zoom meeting to bring that up recently <laughs> but um you never know so uh I was afraid you were going to run in Ward 5 when I decided to run in Ward 5, uh, but you just got redistricted to Ward 6, too. Did you, did you get your letter in the mail? I believe I'm actually in Ward 1. Oh, wait, really? Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, you should definitely run. <laughs> that would be awesome. James? I had a quick thing. It was funny that you mentioned the Cooper Street thing with Callahan, because I live right near there, and that was a very memorable fire. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's... I, you know, it, it's funny because we can bicker about a lot of um, little things that happen within the city, but that fire has not still, is still unresolved as to who, who and how that fire happened. So it, it's, 
it just, um, you know, recently popped up in my memories as to what, whenever it was four or five years ago. So, um, yeah, it, it, I'll, I'll leave that one at that too, as well. Did you know, I learned last year that there's quite a few people in the city that think I burned down that complex, which is, I think, hilarious. There's quite a few new people in the city that think I caused the largest fire in Waltham's history, which is... Yeah, well, uh, that just goes to show uh, people, I think, have a little too much time on their hands. Yeah. Um, You know, uh, obviously, I would imagine that's an ongoing investigation, and I have, you know, as well as you know, we had, we have written affidavits, which I had just recently seen from one, one of our organizers regarding workers on that project being exploited. Hmm. So there's, there's thoughts within our union, because obviously at the time we were investigating, you know, worker exploitation on that project as to, you know, who, possibly you know and it's all speculation at this point but clearly that's uh that's an ongoing investigation i don't think any anybody that lives in the city was involved in that in any way so that, and that's i i would clear you your name to, to put it out there i'm no investigator but i do not think chris gamble lit that on fire perfect my name is cleared. Um, okay, well, thank you very much, Tom, for coming on. I hope to bring you on more. Uh, talk about labor when uh, when the opportunity arises. I appreciate it. And I'd, I'd be remiss not to uh, throw a plug out Please. for anybody that's really looking for a career in the building trades because I'm a first generation carpenter. I knew absolutely nothing about carpentry commercial carpentry and I just went to my union hall and applied um and the good thing about us is we pay you to learn you are paid on the job to learn the trade as well as depending on the trade like for example the carpenters we have a week of school every three months while you learn on the job so and we're equal pay whether you're male, female, transgender, black, white, Hispanic, it's all equal pay. And, um, you know, I was, I I had to have a giggle to myself when I heard WBZ, you know, a month or two ago talking about a big tech company and how, wow, they're working so hard on, you know, equal pay for men and women. And I was like, we've been doing that for over 140 years. You know, that's, that's what we're all about. So um, we do have an apprenticeship program, like I mentioned, and uh, also this spots for journey, journey level carpenters as well. And it, it never hurts. You don't, you don't need to be a fourth generation union member. You don't need to know somebody to get in. You don't need to know, every, you know, a thing about it. It's a good, it's a good career path for people that, you know, whether you went to college, you don't think you could go to college. Um, it's open for anybody. 18, 20, 30, 40, 50, uh, uh, the door is always open. Thank you very much, Tom. Thank you.